Hello, hello. Um, so, where to begin? <laughs> so this is uh, uh, basically Hornet storage, but kind of started as that. I would say that was the seed, and um, a lot has blossomed from it. Um, but to begin, we're going to just start with the all-in-one Hornet storage Nostra Relay. And uh, basically how this thing works is it can host all of the normal Nostra notes that normal relays host, but it can also host Blossom Blobs, which a lot of people are starting to get a lot more familiar with. And, you know, the beauty of Blossom is that it provides the data portability that your normal Nostra notes have, but for your media as well. Because, you know, if a relay bans you for any reason, you can just move your post to another relay because they're all signed by your key. And that would be what Blossom provides um, as well. Uh, for your for your media, um, so Hornet Storage tries to provide that, um, but there is something that happens when the media files get really large. It's basically called a delay attack, um, where the only way you can verify that I signed the video is if you download it first. And if it's a really large video, it might take you you know 10 minutes to download it. So by the time you finish downloading it, um, you then have to verify it, and it might be that I sent you the wrong video. So Merkle trees basically provide this chunking where you can download it branch by branch and verify that every branch is signed um, with the, uh, the signature that signed the root. So it's still just one signature, uh, just like um, your Nostra notes are. Um, so the Hornet Storage Relay supports all three of those. And it comes with a really nice GUI panel that I'm going to show you guys where Relay operators will finally be able to uh, have an experience kind of like how uh, the miners do with their mining farms and the, the dashboard panels that, that they have. So you can see here, um, you got some different graphs that display like the percentage of what uh, you're storing, like photos or videos or normal notes. How oh, you have your paid subscribers at the top and it's all interactable and this is all currently functional. Um, you also have um, the number of addresses, so if people start switching to Bolt 12, uh, you, can, you can track that, and just the number of users that you have on your relay as well. Um, you can track how many gigabytes per month you're storing in total, and uh, you, you could do it month by month, and then that's basically the same thing, but for uh, notes and media segregated. Over here on the right, you have your wallet. A uh, little Bitcoin graph, see the price of Bitcoin, all of your transactions, people who are paying you, you know, if you're a paid relay. Uh, and they have, even have a button for switching to sats if you want to denominate in that. Then here is the settings page. So this is, I think, the most magical part. You can really configure how you want to um, host data. You don't have to do everything. You know, you can store blossom blobs, you can store the Merkle trees, you could turn those off altogether if you want. Here is just the different kind numbers, supporting different NIPs, um, you know, just giving you really a uh, full tog like, toggle ability. Um, and then, you know, some people don't want to uh, host photos and videos, the constant moderation problem, so uh, you can turn those off as well if you want. Same with the audio down there. Just kind of make it a nice experience for relay operators because they're like the backbone of the network at the end of the day, like the, the server operators. And then here you have a statistics for each kind number. So you can kind of track the trends of um, maybe different new Nostra apps that are emerging because, uh, you know, new apps tend to have new kind numbers. Um, so that's pretty much the panel. And there is a light mode as well. It's like a bit of a flashbang for everyone. <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, so that's... That's the beginning. Um, and you know, since we built this relay uh, with the ability to store all types of files, we thought, might as well build a little decentralized Dropbox to test it all out. So this is Nosterbox, and uh, it still isn't released yet. It will be out in maybe two weeks, but it's pretty far along, and I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like as well. So here you log in with your private key, and we want to support other things later, maybe like BitTorrent, so there's a little side panel. But um, it starts here where uh, we're going to add a relay. Just start from the, from the beginning. 
Oh, and those, those are two different transport protocols at the top, by the way. Um, you could support Quick instead of WebSockets, which is a little bit faster, but both are available. So this is connecting to a Hornet storage relay right now. This is just the Nostrabox app. And we're connected. So now we're going to upload a file, just like you would with in Dropbox. And on the top right there, you can see it's, uh, it's uploading. And it's uploaded. Uh, we got a grid view or a list view. Uh, you could even make new folders. And all of these are like tracked with Nostra notes. We forked NIP96, which is like this metadata Nostra note. I've seen Will support it. I think it's a, a really good, simple uh, note that you can uh, incorporate multiple types of file storage into. So it has support for Blossom and uh, Cyanic Merkle trees and even torrents. Um, so we'll, we'll release that very soon, the documentation on it. Um, but here you have your uh, receiving addresses. So this way you could pay your uh, Nostra relay. Uh, to store your data, so you don't have to pay Microsoft and uh, you know all these companies uh, that just hold your stuff hostage. Uh, you can switch. It's like a free market for for data storage now. You know, uh, Nostra is really starting to uh, blossom beyond text, um, and this is the the proof of that. So this was just sending a transaction, basically. Uh, it's going to be using the Neutrino wallet, uh, so it has compact block filters, more privacy friendly uh, for your IP for your IP. Um, and then, yeah, here is uh, the relay you're connected to and the NIPs they support, and then you can even subscribe to them, and you can do like a monthly subscription. And we have a, uh, we've built a NIP that we'll be re releasing soon as well where you can essentially issue an um, invoice as a Nostra note and then pay it. And once you've paid the invoice, then you'll show up in the relay panel. So it really automates the paid relay process. And, yeah, that's Nostra box. Um, so the thing that we really started this all for was to work on the decentralized GitHub. And now that the relay is there and we've been able to store files, we uh, finally are ready to show the uh, progress on the, on the decentralized GitHub. And because uh, we're, you know, we're storing those Git trees in the, in the same way with the Psionic Merkle trees um, on the Hornet storage relays, just like we're storing these files. Um, and you know, Blossom blobs are great, but they're better for small files because of that delay attack risk um, that Merkle trees prevent. So without further ado, I'm going to finally uh, show what we've been working on for like two and a half years now. So this is Nestor. Uh, it's a desktop app, Electron app. And it is like Twitter and GitHub uh, combined. On the right here, we have these toggles where you can essentially turn them on and off, and it will change your feed. And that code toggle lets you see GitHub-related content. And the social is you know, your normal Nostra notes, and then media is uh, you know, the decentralized videos and photos and whatnot. So uh, we can just watch, watch it happen, and I'll try to walk us through um, all the different parts it goes through. But it's definitely more in, involved. So yeah, here you can just scroll through the feed. and. So here we like turn off repost, and now there are no retweets on the feed. So uh, I think you know a marketplace of algorithms is definitely the future, but I think toggles are a, a kind of a simple way to filter your feed. That's nice. Um, so here is like someone's profile, and uh, search is working very well. It's web of trust based search. Just searching a keyword in a streaker there. So this is the profile of Nestor Tester, the little cat. Um, gems on the right are kind of cool. Just a little feature we added where um, kind of like pinned tweets, your, your most popular stuff you can showcase. So here we'll go to repositories. This goes to your profile, but there's a little code section now. And here is a repo. So you can open up a file, edit files, just like GitHub. <laughs> so here we can uh, create issues. Uh, we even added the, the sub-issues, which was a good idea from some of the people on Noster. I thought that was cool. 
Uh, GitHub doesn't have sub issues, so going beyond them. <laughs> and uh, here you can assign people to an issue that you're creating using the same mechanism that we use for search. Uh, you can even add labels. You can even create labels. So these are the little labels you can add to your repo and you can save them and just have a little uh, index of them for later. Here are these zap razors, which are really cool. So basically you assign an issue to one of these zap razors and then you can just try and crowdfund it. And if it raises enough money, then maybe someone will actually t finish the issue <laughs> and collect the bounty. Uh, here's the PR section. So people can have conversations under pull requests. You can check out the commits involved in a pull request, the changes, the parents. different files, just collapsing them and checking stuff out. You can uh, review changes here and write comments, approve a pull request. And then here um, we have a Kanban board, just like on GitHub, for you know large companies where you have a lot of different developers. You guys can uh, sign it's kind of like one of those white one of those whiteboards where you assign tasks and what's in progress and whatnot. And that's all working on Noster notes. Here you can create a pull request, assign people to it, kind of like how you create an issue. All right, so that was the UI side of things. Um, but on the back end, there's some really important notes that uh, I want to mention, and then I'll show you a little demo of the CLI. Um, so uh, a lot of people have been focused on uh, patches for GitHub over Noster. And the issue with patches is that they don't preserve the commit hash, the tags, or the author of the person doing the commit inside the Git tree itself. And you know, you can always write that stuff in a, an external Nostra note, but it's not actually in the Git tree. And if we want to achieve perfect consistency of the actual Git tree in a cryptographically verifiable way where the hash of the Git tree is completely matching, uh, which makes verification of everything much easier, uh, then you, you'd want to achieve that, you know? Um, and here I'm going to show you how uh, we did it there is this esoteric new git command called git bundle that lets you turn a individual push into a pack file, which is what git works on typically. And when you send the pack file to a relay, he can pull from it and integrate your commit while preserving the commit hash, the tags, and the authorship. Uh, so it achieves perfect consistency. And uh, here I'm going to show you a little side-by-side -side thing on the left, we have the user doing the push. And on the right, we have the Horner storage relay. Uh, we call the permission system airlock, because it's kind of like authenticating the person before they come in, um, which all works on Nostra notes as well. But um, here, you can kind of just see the, the workflow of what happens. So airlock is initiated on the right. Then here, we're just setting our, our key, importing our Nostra key. Uh, then we're going to unlock it for the session. It usually stays in memory for like 72 hours. Then here we're going to initiate a new repository. And this is all using uh, Git helper functions and it's using the Git Nestor CLI under the hood, but it's all normal Git. So we CD into the repo, um, assign our key, the, the Nostr key that we just did in the first command. 
Now we're going to add airlock, the relay as our remote, kind of like you would if you were going to add GitHub. Here we're going to add the files to um, uh, the stage, I guess. And then we'll do our first commit, push it. And then on the right here, you can see how the bundle file was received in the, in the scroll. And uh, then uh, three lines down from that, you can see how it pulls the changes from the bundle file and puts them into the main branch. Um, and the commit hashes, they're all perfectly matching. The git tree is perfectly synchronized. Um, so I think that was a, that was a very difficult task. Uh, last year, our original plan was to literally turn the git folder into a Merkle tree and sign the root, and it did not work. So we had to figure out another way to achieve consistency. Luckily, the bundle files emerged while I was scrolling on Noster, by the way. It's a complete coincidence. I saw a, uh, this blog post about it from Hacker News. And then I was like, man, I wonder if these achieve perfect consistency, because they were much newer than patches. They're like from 2018 or something. So uh, after a lot of trial and error, uh, they finally worked out. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really been a long, long road. But uh, in the next two or three weeks, I think it will be completely integrated into the front end. Um, and, and absolutely releasable. So um, we're really excited about that. But uh, before I go, there's one more thing I want to show you guys that has to do with the outbox model. And basically, the outbox model is it's really cool, but I think there's a way that we could improve it a bit. Um, so in the bottom right there, you could see that infinite loading bar. This happens sometimes when there are missing Nostra notes. Um, for example, if I'm not on the same Nostra relay that you're on, then I can't see your posts a lot of the time, especially if my relay isn't syncing. Um, so uh, the idea of the outbox model is honestly very clever. And you know, it took me a while to adjust to it, but you guys had a, a, a good point. Uh, and the idea is just to reach out to other people's relays and retrieve the data uh, instead of just always trying to retrieve the data from your own relay. Um, and uh, this is cool, but sometimes it's hard to get somebody's latest relay list. You know, if I, if I don't know your list of relays, how can I reach out to them, you know? And with the outbox model, they tried to solve it by creating something called NIP65, which is like a mini relay list. It has like two relays on it, and the goal is to spread that little mini list across as many relays as you can. But sometimes these relays aren't even communicating with each other. They're in completely different countries. They don't even know that the other one exists. So that NIP65 note doesn't get to everyone. And the idea with this is to basically put your NIP65 note on the BitTorrent DHT. Because the BitTorrent DHT has 10 million nodes, and the idea is that all the other nodes are able to find the, um, each other more easily using the DHT. They have like this B tree of of the locations of nearby nodes, and it's literally designed for, for discovering each other. Um, so the idea is you can basically publish a thousand byte file on the DHT for free, um, as much as you want. And usually people republish every two hours um, or, or longer. Um, but you can just put your, your relay list on the DHT all the time, and then anytime someone wants to find your relays, they just need your DHT key, and they can instantly pull it from the DHT uh, and then pull your data. Whatever note is missing can be pulled. So it's a little bit more resilient than just expecting the SNP65 note to get spread around to all of the relays. Because sometimes, like I said, the relays don't even know that the other ones exist. Uh, so the DHT kind of makes them aware of each other so that they can um, you know, make, become accessible to you. Uh, so yeah, I think this will really just finish off the outbox model and polish it off. Um, but yeah, so that, that's, that's it for the technical stuff. I just want to give a shout out to the team, because uh, there's a lot of us uh, that have done this. Um, so there's some of us in the US, um, Adam in the UK, then been there since the beginning, um, and Chris in Indonesia. Chris really worked hard on the DHT. So we took the relay to another level. Uh, and then Marty Malmi recently joined us and helped us uh, a lot with the, the uh, we ended up using a lot of his stuff with the Noster box and the Kanban board, um, and uh, and then Cipher is our is our pseudonym. So we don't know where he is. <laughs> it's good to have one on the project, but uh, yeah, thank you very much.